Now let's have a quick view of side angle side. And this is an interesting postulate here. I've got, um, well, I'm just trying to make two triangles here out of these three components. Each of these triangles has a red segment. Each of them has a blue segment. And where they meet, they're joined by this green angle. Now, if this green angle is between the red and the blue segments, it's known as the included angle. And if I wanted to visualize a triangle, well, I could just imagine in those shaded regions, I could complete a triangle right there. You can see the two figures, and I'll bet you if I were to orient them the same way at least, or maybe like this, they might actually look like a matching pair. And what do you know? Triangle RST is congruent to triangle UVW. And they're congruent, in this case, again, by side, angle, side. Well, let's look at the two triangles we've got here, LMN and NQP. We see right away that we've got a pair of right angles, and we know that all right angles are congruent. And those right angles are what we call in the included angles because they're in between the two pairs of congruent sides, and that's classic side angle side. So yes, these figures are, um, triangles are congruent by side angle side. And if I looked at it, I can see this would be a translation or a glide, as some texts like to call them. One just slides over like that. And there you go. Well, these triangles don't look as promising. Right here, I know I've got a pair of congruent angles. Since perpendicular lines form right angles, right angles are congruent. But um, there's no way that this shaded triangle is going to be congruent to this one. If you look at that, they're not even similar. Now, I could have drawn this a few different ways, but you see it's not even close. All I've got is the hypotenuse of this one congruent to the leg of this one. And by definition, that just can't be. Hypotenuse has to be the longest side of the triangle. So there's no way, no matter how we arrange the letters, those triangles just plain are not congruent. Well, let's check out these two triangles. We've got the congruent sides, and these two angles, one and two, are congruent. And of course, the third side, each triangle uses this side, so there's our missing component for side angle side. They are indeed congruent by side angle side. And let's have a look to visualize this rotation because we can see that the E, F, and the H rotate around to G, H, and F respectively. So again, E, F, H, G, H, F, and we're done. Well, number 14, the sneakiest in the series. Can we prove these triangles congruent by side angle side? Let's have a look. Well, we do have the reflexive property working there. And we've got a pair of parallel lines cut by a transversal. And you know what that means, that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So we've got a pair, well, two pairs of congruent sides and a pair of angles that are congruent. You might be tempted to say this. You might be tempted to say, okay, well, that looks like a rotation. It looks like they're congruent by side angle sign. But wait a minute. Hang on a second there. This angle, it would need, the angles would be, need to be over here. And over here, you got, we got the wrong angles. And you say, well, they still are congruent anyway. Let me show you this. Let's suppose I do this and I change the figure a little bit. See, watch L move. Do you see there's two possible locations for L? Because after all, I've got a side, an angle, and the side is not adjacent to my given angle. So I'm not sure where L is. There's two possible triangles with these given criteria. So side, side, angle is not going to work as a congruence condition. So my only conclusion there, and this is a tricky one, 
these two triangles are not congruent. It's right there. Okay, which of these four is insufficient to prove triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF? We'll get started right away with A. And I'll mark the tick marks there. Well, that looks like side angle side in anybody's book. So A is not a problem. We can get that one right out of there. All right, I'll check out C now. Notice I skipped one. And this one says I've got three pairs of congruent sides in the correct order. So, well, that's side, side, side. So we can get rid of C. Let's check out D. Mark those tick marks. And again, in the right order, I've got a side, an angle, and a side. So side, angle, side. And D is not my choice. I am having a suspicion about B. And I'll put those tick marks on there. I say it don't even make sense at all. So clearly, B is the choice. This does not prove triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF. Well, here's an interesting diagram. We've got a square with a diagonal drawn and we can see several right triangles. So I'm thinking, if I look at this right triangle here being congruent to this one, see there's, there's a pair right there. I could say ABD congruent to BCD by side angle side. Well, that's a couple we can look at. Now let's look at this one. Let me take ABD and well, let me do this. Well, ABD is congruent to ADB, its own reflection. Hmm. Well, how about if I do this and see I'm reflecting over this axis. And I can see there are in fact four congruent right triangles and they would all be congruent by side angle side. So I would list any of those as possible candidates. Well, here we go looking for these congruent triangles again. And here we have a regular pentagon that's equal sides, equal angles. I'm looking first at this. Here we go. Triangle STU congruent to its rotation, UVR. Now that's one of the many possibilities. And that's, of course, by side angle side. And well, I could change it up a little bit. Let me imagine this axis right here, and I could rotate. Ah, if I do that, then I'm saying STU is congruent to RVU. And that is, of course, by side angle side again. And we could continue this argument. We could find so many. For example, we've over here. Let me just take this. So I can say S, or STU is congruent to its reflection, its own reflection, UTS. And that would be by, again, side angle side. Well, this is an exercise in visualization, number 19 here. We're given a diagram like this. So I'm going to move this one slowly. I would like you to draw it. Imagine if I took this point C and I spun it. Move it slowly for you. See, it's moving like this. But watch what happens. Did y'all see that? Okay. Watch again. The C is going to move into the relative position of the G. The A swings over where the E is. And of course, this unnamed point is really the F. Well, I couldn't have two F's on here, so I'm going to click this, call it F prime. And I guess I could, by the same token, I could call this H prime and this D prime, because that's where they came from. So let's move that, oh, let's move over again. See? And if I shade the triangles, it would look like that. How are they congruent? Well, I've got a right angle here at G, and at C, and I've got this segment, AC must be congruent to EG, and this side, AF, must be congruent to EB, the hypotenuse of each side. So these two triangles are certainly congruent, and I would say by hypotenuse leg. 